Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here's a really awesome project that I made. It's a turn-based strategy action game, very much inspired by the likes of XCOM. In total, it took me about 30 hours to build this project, and I'm quite happy with the final result. It's got all of the mechanics you expect. There's turn-based combat and movement, it has line of sight, both full and half cover, an overwatch mechanic, and of course, a hit percentage for those awesome 99% misses. In this video, let's check out how I made it, starting from scratch until the final polished game. Also, stick around to the end where I have a very exciting announcement to share. If you prefer a more guided path with step-by-step -step lectures, then check out my complete courses, learn how to make a Builder Defender game using c -sharp, just like I make my own Steam games, or learn how to make games entirely using visual scripting, or learn all about Unity with the Ultimate Overview course, which contains over 30 lectures, each covering a different tool or feature of the engine to help you make better games faster. I'm always available in the courses Q&A section, answering your questions every single day. So check out all the courses with the link in the description. So I start off like I usually start these projects, thinking on paper and writing down some basic design. This is obviously inspired by XCOM, so I inspected the game to see what were the crucial features, and I also took some time to think about how I would structure the code. For example, I realized that everything in the game is really an action, shooting is an action, abilities are an action, and even just simple movement is also an action. So I thought quite a bit on what is the best way to implement that logic in the code using a nice common interface. Then I opened a new project and just started working on it. Like I said, it's all about action, so I started off implementing a basic movement action, setting up the main unit class in the interface and making a move action that implements it. With that, the character was just moving in a straight line. Also for the visuals over here, I'm using the super useful Synthi Studios prototype pack. I think this one was free during a bunch of giveaways, so chances are you already have it. These are pretty nice simple assets. Then of course, since the game is grid based, I once again reused my super useful grid system. If you're new to the channel, check out the home playlist. This class and this playlist is one of the best examples of the power of writing clean reusable code. I originally made it over 3 years ago, and now it just took me 5 minutes to implement a working grid. With that, then I added some grid movement, so instead of having the unit move directly to the path, now it goes in a grid path, one grid position at a time. However, at this point still no pathfinding, so it just moves all horizontally and then all vertically. Up next, I wanted to be able to move to where I clicked, so I implemented a simple mouse click and mouse position. Once again, reusing a super awesome class I made in a previous video. It gets me the mouse position in the world, then using that, I can tell the unit where to move. Then with the grid position object, I added a field for the unit and some logic to know where that unit was. So just by looking at the grid itself, I can know exactly what unit is occupying what position. Then for the unit selection, once again, I spend quite some time thinking about the design, thinking about what would be the best way to implement this. And I came up with a simple class to manage the current active unit and action. Since I know which unit is on which grid position, it's actually very easy to handle selection. I just need to check the grid position under the mouse and check if there's a unit on it, and if so, select it. Then just add a simple visual to know which one is selected, again, all while writing some nice clean code so the visual is completely separated from the system. Then once again, some more thinking time. Now this time, thinking about how to best implement multiple actions, I realized that a lot of them would have quite a lot of things in common, like what unit that action belongs to and a callback they store on action complete. So with that, I made a base class with all of that common logic. Then I started implementing multiple actions, starting with a simple spin action, just spinning the character in place. This action obviously makes no sense in the final game, but over here it's very simple and very visual, so it's great to make sure that the whole system works great with any number of actions of any type. And at this point the game was already starting to take shape, despite the fact that it was just 2 hours of development. So this really showcased 3 things. One, it's the power of writing clean reusable code. I first made the grid system 3 years ago, and now it just took me 5 minutes to reuse it. And also the mouse position, I also made that video about 2 years ago, and here I just reused the same class. Another thing this showcases is the power of pre-production. Since I dedicated quite a few days to preparing an outline for what I want to build, when I actually started building it, I already had a pretty nice idea of exactly what I needed to build, so what systems I need to make and how they would interact with one another. And finally, this showcases the power of experience. Really, if I had tried to make this game 10 years ago when I was just starting with Unity, back then it would have taken me weeks or maybe a month to get to this point. But thanks to all of the experience I already have, I really managed to build this in just under 2 hours. So those are 3 really nice takeaways from just the beginning of this project. Okay, so everything was already looking pretty good. Next up was adding one very crucial thing to this game, adding action points and a turn system. I want to be able to spend action points doing some actions, then end the turn and have the action points reset. 
For the character visual elements, I used a World Space Canvas UI. It's super useful, I made a video on that. Each unit has a nice overlay showing the action points. After that, I implemented health, once again reusing my health system from the very first video on this channel. Very simple to add, just added a visual to the character overlay and made a simple shoot action. So just by clicking on another unit, it deals damage. Super simple. Also at this point, you could spam click and take actions at the same time as other actions, so this can really cause a lot of bugs. So I just added a simple turn blocker. Basically it blocks any actions while the current one is running. Very simple and fixes tons of issues. After that, I just added some animations just to look a bit better. So just some simple moving and shooting animations. Then for the actions, instead of debug keys, I made a proper UI. Just some simple buttons and when selected, they enable a specific action on the current selected unit. And for selecting units, it's still the same. So while in move action, if you click on top of another unit, then instead of moving there, it just selects that unit. After that was something very important, adding a grid visual. Here I went with a super simple approach, just spawning a simple prefab on every single grid position. Now this one is not the most performant approach, but it works pretty well in this case. If I wanted maximum performance, then I would implement a single mesh just like I did in the heat map video or even the 2D XCOM video. But for this quick demo, this really works more than good enough. With the grid visual done, I then expanded each action to return a list of all of the valid grid positions. So you can no longer move an infinite amount or move just zero units. Also, you cannot shoot an infinite distance, so it needs to be within a certain range for the action to be valid. Thanks to how all of the code is set up in a nice clean way, it's super simple to add unique rules for each action. Then I added something extremely important, some simple pathfinding. I actually reused the exact same script that I made in the pathfinding video. That video teaches you how the A-star pathfinding algorithm works, so check it out if you want to understand it. The only downside with the exact class made in that video is that it's not really intended to be performant. But again, in this case, since this is a turn-based shooter, maximum performance isn't really a requirement. Related to the pathfinding was obviously making some paths either walkable or unwalkable. So for that, I just added a collider for each solid object that I want to block path, and I placed that collider in a specific layer. Then, right when the game starts, the pathfinding is created and goes through every single grid position and does a raycast to see if there's any blockage there. If so, the grid position becomes unwalkable, and if not, then it's normal. So some pretty simple logic, and with that, pathfinding was fully working. Up next, for a bit of fun, I added a ragdoll to the units when they die. It's really simple, it's using Unity's built-in ragdoll wizard, which is actually one of the tools that I cover in my Ultimate Unity Overview course. It's pretty easy to use the tool and make any character turn into a ragdoll, so now when the units die, they fall to the ground in a nice, satisfying way. Also at this point, there was no concept of enemy or friendly, so I just quickly added that. Just a simple boolean variable, so either a unit is friendly or an enemy. After that, I implemented some camera movement. Super simple, for this I used Sin Machine, which makes camera handling extremely easy. Just made the virtual camera follow a target object, then with a simple script, just moved that object, rotated and applied some zoom. For another quick visual improvement, I enabled screen space ambient occlusion. This one is a subtle effect, but it looks pretty great. It's also somewhat hidden, but I made a video on how to enable it if you don't know about it. Then it was finally time to tackle one of the more complex tasks, start working on the enemy AI. First start off with the easiest part, just making the enemy take a turn. So it just makes sure that it's the player's turn, and then when the player ends their turn, the enemy takes theirs. With that basic logic working, then it was time to make the enemy take actions. Again, starting simple, just testing the logic to make it take an action. So all it does is take a spin action while it has action points. And after all of the enemies spend their action points, then the enemy ends their turn and goes back to the player. With that working, then it was time to make some proper AI. I spent quite some time thinking about this. Naturally, AI is a massive topic. You could spend hours, weeks, or even years just working on AI. For this quick demo, I wanted something functional but as simple as possible. So the rules that I implemented were pretty simple. If you can shoot a player character, then shoot. If not, move somewhere, and to test where to move, assign some points depending on the number of targets in range of that new position. So basically, it tries to move to where it can shoot at least one player unit. And then if there's something in range, then just shoot them. Also made them prioritize weaker units. So if there's a unit with half health and one with full health, then it targets the weakest. This is also the best tactic when actually playing XCOM. You want to remove as many enemy units as possible. Okay, so with that very basic AI done, then I worked on a fun task, making an action camera. Once again, pretty easy thanks to using Cinemachine. Just made another virtual camera. 
Then through code, when someone takes an action, it positions the camera right behind the shooter looking at the target. And when the action is done, it simply disables the virtual camera and it goes back to the regular virtual camera. Up next, it was time to work on another crucial system, making the cover system. For defining cover, it was pretty easy. Every object that's already blocking pathfinding, meaning every solid object, for all of those, I just added another script, which defines if that object works as half or full cover. It's really similar to how the pathfinding works, just goes through every single grid position to check the cover state, and simply sets that state on that grid position. So populating the world with cover points is super easy. For the cover animation, I just went into Mixamo and downloaded a free crouch idle animation. Mixamo is an awesome website where you can download free animations that work on any project. I made a video on that home process. Then I decided to continue working on the game during a live stream. Thank you all for joining me. First task on stream was a simple one, just make a cover icon. So it's just an image, it listens to the events when the unit changes grid position and just updates the icon. Super simple. Then I also quickly made some high crates, just took out the normal crates, stretched them out, changed the cover script value to say these are now full cover. With that done, I then decided to build another action, a throw grenade action. Creating the action itself was pretty easy thanks to how all the code is set up in a nice clean way. I just need to make an action script that implements the interface and write down the throw grenade code. For throwing, it just spawns a visual prefab and moves it over time. Since the player can throw at various distances, then the grenade movement couldn't be a static animation, it had to be driven by code. For the horizontal movement, I made it as normal, but for the vertical movement, I went with the approach of using an interesting animation curve. This one is a really awesome Unity feature that has tons of use cases. Don't be fooled by the name, these can be used for anything, not just animations. You can place the points and draw the curve exactly as you want it. So in my case, I use the animation curve to define the y-axis. So the grenade moves, and then when it lands, I just spawn some nice and simple particles. And finally for dealing damage, I just did a physics overlap sphere to find all of the objects in range, find all of the unit objects and call the deal damage function. Then I also wanted to add a nice destruction to the cover objects. For that, I used the method that I covered in a previous video, just using ProBuilder to slice the crate into multiple pieces. Then I just spawn the prefab when the crate is destroyed and apply some force to make all of the parts go flying. As you can see, it's really easy to add some destruction in your games and it looks really awesome. That was the end of the live stream. thank you all for joining me. Back to working on it by myself, I started working on the Fog of War system. Units should not be able to see all over the map, if an enemy is behind the wall it should be invisible. Handling that logic was very similar to what I covered in the line of sight field of view videos. I just start from each unit position, then I do some math to get all of the directions around the unit, and test the grid positions at various distance points. If the grid position has a full cover object, then the unit cannot see further. It's some pretty simple logic and it works great. Just need to then connect it to the enemy logic, just add some simple code to hide the visual so the enemy still works as normal, just invisible, and that's pretty much it and it works. Next was adding a crucial mechanic for this game type, calculating a hit percentage. Now this one is pretty easy to add, you can make it as complex as you want in the math, but really I just kept it simple. Basically just took into account the distance to the target, also whether the target was in cover or not. Then with that, I also had an accuracy field to each unit, just to add a tiny bit of randomness. If you had a more persistent game like XCOM with the Overwhelm, then you could load your soldier accuracy stats. For this simple prototype, I'm happy with the simple math that I have here. It adds a degree of randomness to your hits, but it can also be managed by the player simply playing better, by getting into cover and approaching the enemies before firing. Up next was a fun mechanic, adding an Overwatch. This one is also quite simple thanks to how everything is set up. For making the action, since all the code is set up in a nice clean way, it was pretty easy to add another action. Then for the logic, basically I just need to know what is the overwatch range. And since I already have events when every unit changes grid position, I just listen to that and see if the enemy unit entered within the overwatch range. And if so, just shoot them using the same calculate percent with a bit of a penalty. So that's really it, it works great and this ability was super easy to make. With that, all of the mechanics were pretty much done, so I just quickly set up a nice level, placing down walls, crates, enemies and so on. And with that, over here is the final result. Alright, so here I am on turn 1. I've got my team right here, and over here is a bunch of enemies. There's a fog of war system, so I can't see any more enemies around this area. Then down here I can select which action I want to take, and by clicking I can select which unit. And by default the move action shows me everywhere that I can move. And of course there's the walls with full cover and the crates, some with full cover, some with half cover. So I'm going to move my unit over there. And there you go, he runs, and now he's got full cover. 
And I can go into the shoot action and try to hit any of these. And of course, they've got a certain hit percentage. That one is on full cover, so the hit percentage is real low. Then this one is closer than this one. So let's try hitting this one, 78% chance. So click, there you go, the nice camera zoom in, the nice shot, and in this case, it actually missed. So now this one is out of action point, so let's select another one. Move them into a bit of cover. In this case, maybe throw a grenade. Just throw and boom, deals nice AOE damage. And for this one, just without moving, just shoot that one and try to hit. Yep, there you go, nice hit, another one. And if there you go, another nice hit. And as soon as the enemy dies, there goes a really nice ragdoll. Okay, so I'm out of action points, and now it's time to let the enemy take their turn. The enemy AI is currently running, and all of the various enemies are taking their action. That one decides to take a shot, and there you go, lands two shots. Then another one lands a shot, there goes one of my units, and another one getting hit. And yep, as soon as the enemy takes all their turns, now it's my turn again. So once again, I can move, I can attack, I can throw some grenades, and so on. The game also has some nice destructibility, so if I fire a grenade over there and there's a crate, just fire the grenade, and boom, there you go, it also blows up the box. And the final skill is the Overwatch, so I just enable Overwatch and I end my turn. And there's the enemy, starts to move, and as soon as he gets within range, he gets a nice shot. Alright, so that's the minigame, pretty awesome. Now here's the exciting announcement that I mentioned in the beginning. The reason why I made this quick prototype is because this is going to be my next complete course. This is a pretty fun genre, I think a lot of people would like to learn how to make this specific type of game, something turn-based strategy with actions, combat, abilities, movement, and so on. And personally, I also really like it, so it's perfect for my next complete step-by-step -step course. It's going to be in the same format as my other courses, so starting completely from scratch and going step-by-step -step until the final polished game. So if that's something you're interested in, there's a link in the description where you can sign up and I'll let you know when it's out. As for timing, it's always very tricky to know exactly, but I already have this prototype and the outline and a lot of things already done, so hopefully within the next one to two months. So if you're interested in that course, sign up on the website. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.